Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Perpetual Chess Podcast. Wait, no, this, this is not it. Um, I'm John Hartman. I am the digital editor for Chess Life uh, for Chess Life Online. I'm also the editor of Chess Life Magazine. And today I am throwing Ben Johnson back on his haunches and uh, changing things up a bit. Usually he's the one doing the talking. Today I'm going to be doing the talking because I am helping him set some engines up on his brand new computer. So you can't see Ben um, because we've got a uh, team viewer set up. But Ben, how are you doing today? I am great. I am forever grateful for you doing this, John. And hello to um, to anyone watching this. Um, I'll try to encourage John to go slowly so that us, Lida, us Luddites, uh, my fellow Luddites watching, can figure out how to install these engines. I will go very, very slowly. Don't worry. Um, so you just got a brand new computer. Yes. And John you... Hartman stamp of approval and everything. We did talk about what would be a good value for the dollar, and we settled on this. We can actually take a look at the some of the specs right here. So this is a, um, for those of you who don't know how to get here, you're going to go into your Windows settings and then go down to uh, About. And so you can click and see that we've got, uh, we've got an AMD Ryzen 3600 six-core processor. So that means there are uh, six CPUs and 12 threads. Uh, don't worry about what that means. Basically, that means you've got a, quite a lot of computing power. The reason I wanted to show you this and the reason I wanted to talk about it is that having this knowledge is going to be uh, kind of important for how we set up the engine. Uh, if we look at the system info, uh, we should look at one more thing. Again, if you want to do this at home, when you're watching this, you can go to Control Panel and Windows 10, Systems and Security and System. Or you, if, you if you happen to have the My Computer icon on your desktop, you can right-click it and click on Device Manager. Uh, so you notice we have a Ryzen 5 3600. So this is an AMD uh, CPU, 16 gigabytes of memory, which is very good for chess. The more memory you're going to have, the better that's going to be for your engines. And then if we click on Device Manager, the one thing I wanted to look at was the... Where is it? The the display the, the display adapter. It used to be called the video card. This is they call it a display adapter now. And you have an NVIDIA GE Force GTX 1660 Super. So uh, the reason this is important is that when you set up Leela, uh, we have to know what video card you have, and I'll explain all that in just a moment. But so this is a uh, GTX 1660 Super. Uh, should be nice and strong for Leela. We will make this uh, we'll make this computer sing for you. All right, so we can close all this, and we're just going to open up a web browser, and we're going to just Google Stockfish. And you can go to stockfish.org, and uh, we're going to get a little fancier than this here today, um, but you can just download Stockfish, just download this file, and do exactly what we're going to do in just a moment. Um, yeah. Go ahead. I may hop in. Uh, you know, you had that exchange with Greg Shahadi on Twitter about the evaluation issue with Stockfish, where it kind of um, it it always has whites evaluation a little bit higher. So yeah. Whites are moved. So this is actually this is what I wanted to sort of raise here. Um, so Stockfish, Stockfish 11 has a contempt factor built into it. What that means is that whatever side it is. Um, it is analyzing for, or whatever side it's thinking for, it always thinks it's about a quarter of a pawn stronger than it really is. And the reason they do this is that, you know, because Stockfish is the best, um, the best chess engine out there, uh, well, except for maybe Leela, it, it needs to win games in order to maintain its rating. So this contempt factor is built in so that it will just keep playing, even if it's slightly worse. That's really good for playing against another engine. It's not so great for analysis. So... What I have done, um, and again, you can do exactly what we're going to do just with Stockfish 11, just from Stockfish, you know, stockfishchess.org. I actually have a website called firstlookchess.com. And I have taken Stockfish and I've made a version of it that has that contempt st stripped out. Good. We don't like contempt. We do not have contempt for anyone, um, except for anyone who hates chess, right? Right. Right. So uh, we're going to download this. And again, it's so the same exact thing. It's going to be a, a zip file. And we're going to download one of these from Amazon Cloud Drive. Okay. We will download it. It has downloaded, I'm assuming, to your, to your download folder. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're seeing all your secret stuff now. 
Uh, and now, so we've got here Stockfish, uh, Stockfish 11, C0. And we're just going to extract it, or we're going to uh, we're going to extract it to a different folder. So extract to you can do this just in Windows by doing extract all, or you can go to Seven Zip, which you have installed. Very good, nice nerdery Ben. Uh, I got lucky. I didn't do it myself. <laughs> uh, we're going to extract that to this folder. So Stockfish 11 C0. And when we click on this, you're going to see there's a folder created here. So if we open up this folder, you will see that there are four different options here, four different engines that you can choose from. Um, for the vast majority of our viewers, they're going to want to choose between the BMI2 version and the modern version. Uh, BMI2 is a set of CPU instructions that Intel processors, modern Intel processors, are able to use. It might make Stockfish a tiny bit faster on Intel processors if you use this. If you're using an, a an AMD processor, you're going to want to use the modern version. And since we said we have an AMD Ryzen processor here, we're going to use this. So we're going to copy this. We're just going to right click it, copy. You can also do this by going to, by highlighting it, going to home and copy there. We're going to copy. And then we're going to go to your chess base folder, which I'm assuming is in documents. No, it's not in documents. Have you set chess base up yet? Yeah, it's there somewhere. Okay, well, we'll take a look. I think it's in program files, maybe? Uh, so, let's see, it's documents not in here I'm trying not to show everybody your secret documents here uh, mostly pictures of people that have been on the podcast it's pretty boring very terribly exciting yes uh, uh, I think it's in program files x86 okay pro, uh, program file it might be in chess it might be here yeah. let's see chess base okay. 15 okay so if it's in program files chess base wherever you're gonna put this it could be in uh, my documents it could be somewhere else on on your computer wherever you may have set it up but program files chess base is usually a good place to look. We're just going to create a folder and we're going to call it. Oh, we have to continue. That's fine. Engines. And we're going to go in. And we're going to create a new folder. We can do this either again for, through the toolbar or we can do it up here with this handy dandy little thing right here. But we'll just do this and we'll just call it Stockfish 11. And then we will paste it. The reason it's asking for this access, by the way, is that we've set up this folder in your program files, and it just wants to make sure that we're not copying anything silly into there. So it's it's just a nice safety check from Windows to make sure that we're not going to screw up our um, our operating system. All right, so we have now copied the the correct Stockfish file into uh, the correct folder. Again, so that's in we've got it here in program files, chess base, engines, Stockfish 11. So let's open up Chessbase 15. You've got Mega. That's what you need. No updates, though, I see. We're going to have to work on that. Um, in order to install a engine into Chessbase, what you need to do is just open up a board, just a blank board. You're not going to save it. You're not going to do anything with it. And then you're going to go to Create UCI Engine. Now, this process will be exactly the same for what we do with Leela. Um, so this is how you, you can set up any engine that you get. If you happen to buy Komodo, if you happen to have a copy of Houdini lying around, um, whatever, Fat Fritz, if you, ha if you have to install that manually, anything you do is going to be done the same way. So we're going to create a UCI engine, and then it's going to ask us basically to find that file we just, we just uh, pasted. So we'll click on here. We will go to Chessbase, Engines, Stockfish, and we will click on that file and we will open it. And so now you notice that we've got all of these uh, these things populated. It says Stockfish 11, C0, that's my version, meaning Contempt 0. Uh, again, you can do this exactly the same way if you download it from stockfishchess.org. And then we're just going to check the parameters. So when you look at this, it's going to give you a list of things that uh, it's going to ask you about. Uh, contempt is set to 0, so that's good. Uh, threads is set to six, so it's going to be it's going to be running on all six of your CPUs. At the end of this, by the way, if you happen to want to run Stockfish and Leela together, we'll show you how to do that. You're going to have to minimize this a little bit, but we'll get there. All the rest of this stuff looks good, so we can just hit OK, and we'll hit OK. Now we should be able to add a kibitzer, and lo and behold, there it is. So let's see what happens. Six CPUs it is running at. 
8 million nodes a second. Not too shabby. So, Stockfish is installed, and at the moment, it is available through Add Kibitzer. Now, if you want to make that your default engine, so that whenever you hit this little button right here, it'll just pop up, you can go to File, Options, Engines, and then you're going to set the default engine. Stockfish. And when you do this, it's actually always a good idea to click Advanced and to determine how much memory you want to use for this. So... Generally speaking, um, unless you are you know have a, have a system with like 64 gigabytes of memory, you probably don't ever want to use more than half your RAM on this. So we have a 16 gigabyte uh, system of RAM here. So we're probably gonna, we're going to set this for 8 gigs. For most things you do, this is going to be plenty. We'll hit OK. And now, whenever we do default kibitzer, it'll pop up with 8 gigs of RAM. Stockfish. And Stockfish is here. All right, so Stockfish is good to go. And again, you if you happen to buy Komodo, which is uh, probably the number two alpha beta engine, uh, you can also go get it for free. Let me show you. Uh, no, not, not the pay version, but you can get a version for free uh, at KomodoChess.com. You can get Komodo 11 for free. Uh, which is still insanely strong. I mean, really, any chess engine you're going to download, unless it's written by a total potzer, uh, is going to be strong enough to defeat any player in the world. Uh, but, you know, normally, if, if you want a second opinion, Komodo is a great second opinion. All right. So Stockfish is kind of fun, uh, but really, let's talk about the fun one, which is Leela. So, uh, Leela, I, I did a video on how to install Leela a while ago. And... Uh, some of the things have changed, so we're actually just going to, when you Google it, just Google Leela Chess or go to lc0.org. And you'll notice, if you happen to look at that video I did some months ago, it's a little different now. Uh, they've changed, the, they've changed the, the screen here. And so what we need to do is we need to download two parts. And if you click on download, they will walk you through it. So the first thing you need to download is the, the engine, um, which here is 0.25 point one and it'll let you download each one of these directly this is where knowing what video card you have is really really important so for a newer nvidia engine uh, newer uh, nvidia GP, a gpu like we have here you're going to want to download this cuda backend or CU, cuda engine if you happen to have a newer amd card and you're running windows 10 so you're going to download this DirectX version. If you happen to have an older one, uh, an older NVIDIA card, uh, the OpenCL will work. It's not as fast as either of these two, but it will still work. And if you happen to have like a integrated video card, like a Intel, you know, um, some sort of UHD uh, built-in video card, you're going to have to use the CPU version. Uh, uh, these these don't work nearly as well, but they can work if you want to try it. The one we're going to install here is, is the one for this computer, which is a GTX 1660. Uh, if you happen to have an RTX card, this will also work here. So we're going to download this CUDA version. And you notice it's a very big file. It's about 260 uh, megabytes. So it is downloaded. We are going to go into your downloads. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to extract it using 7-zip or whatever you want to use to a new folder. And we're going to take this and we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did before, except we're going to copy the whole folder over to program uh, over to the chess base folder. So we're going to take it, copy it. Again, go to Windows, wherever you happen to have it. Here it's Program Files, Chess Base, Engines. And we're going to paste that whole thing right here. It's going to ask for permission. Okay. So now we've got the folder here. We've only done half the thing, though. Uh, what we've done is we've downloaded the, the engine that reads the neural network. But we still need to get the neural network. And for that, you're going to need to go to uh, Networks and Runs. So the network is kind of like the brains behind Leela. And let's see if we can do this here. Oh, actually, we have to. We actually have to go somewhere else for this. I'm sorry. 
actual networks, best nets. So if when you're on that, uh, when you when you go back from the fir the front page for Leela to get here, you're going to go to download, actual networks, and then we need to talk about this right here. So there are different sized networks that have different amounts of knowledge built into them. Um, Normally speaking, you'd, you'd think, oh, the more knowledge that is built into a neural network, the better. The problem is the bigger they get, they also get a lot slower when it comes to processing them or when it comes to your GPU being able to create chess moves out of that knowledge. So it's really, really important to choose, uh, to choose one of these based on what video card you have. If you are a real power user, if you happen to have multiple GPUs built in, for 99% of the people watching this video, that's not going to be you. But if you have built a chess computer specifically, like if you're a super grandmaster, you can use one of these big 30-bit, um, uh, one, one of these the, these top ones here, this, this 30B uh, network. Most normal people are going to want to use one of these three. So if you happen to have a RTX video card, which is the latest one that is available from NVIDIA, and you're doing slow analysis or you're playing very slow games, you can use one of these 24B ones. If you are using a regular NVIDIA card or if you're just doing analysis maybe for 10 to 15 seconds, and again, this is going to be the vast majority of people, you're going to want to use one of these 20B ones. And if you're trying to run this on your CPU or a very, very old video card, one of these uh, 10 by uh, 10 by 128 uh, block or byte uh, versions is going to be the best. Now we said here that we had a GTX 1660, so a good NVIDIA card, but not not one of the super top end ones. So we're going to use one of these 20 by tw uh, by 256 networks. And you see, the nice thing is they give you a whole list to choose from. Uh, so if again, if you're if you're a real power user, you got two CPU two GPUs, you can use this. Uh, for the for those of us who are uh, maybe using a slightly stronger card, this 24 by uh, 320. For most people, this is the one you want. And then you have some choices here as well. Um, Leela Stein is a like a sort of remixed version by this guy J Josh. Uh, the Sergio V repository. This is kind of like taking the the oldest uh, the strongest purely trained one and then uh, doing some extra work on it. And if you want the one that, that is just pure Leela, no extra training, you can go for this 42850 version. And any, the, the great thing is you can click on any of these and it'll download it. The, probably, the, the one that is probably strongest for everybody, um, you can choose between this one and this one. I tend to like the Sergio V version. So again, we're just going to download this. And the one you want to download is this 256 by 20 file right here. And it's going to take you a little while to download. So I'm going to stop talking for a second. Uh, so Ben, is this all making sense to you? Uh, of course not. But, <laughs> but I have full confidence that you know what you're doing. One, one question that just popped in my mind. Sure. Is, um, like, for example, because like when someone like me is doing this on my own, I would have no idea how to know out of the mod YAML and the uh, T40, 1541, PBGZ, which one do I get? Like, yes. How do, you, how do you know that? So PB and G, so GZ is a, a compression algorithm, and the PB is kind of like the the end the, the the end of the name for uh, these kind of files. So that's that's just how I knew what it was. It's when you put this in here, you don't even have to unzip it. You don't have to do anything. It just automatically takes this file and can read it through the through the the compression algorithm. So yeah, you're you're always going to look for this PB GZ thing. If you are um, if you're looking at this one. I think it just downloads directly this one, but it'll be similar. Let's see if we can go show it in the folder. Well, it won't show yet, but when it does, it'll have that that PBGZ end to the to the to the file name. Does that make sense? Yeah, somewhat. Somewhat. Yeah. Th this is this is the hardest thing about computers. Um, you know, nobody looks at you if you don't know how to change your own oil or if you don't know how to fix your own car, but somehow everybody expects that they should be able to do all this stuff to their own computer and. To me, it's no different than you know going to a mechanic to, to get them to do the things that need to get done. It's just it's it's basically the same thing to me. Anyway, uh, so we should be just about done here. It's downloading. It's gonna be about five more seconds for both of these. I mean, if we want to wait, John, one question I could ask sure. you is um, uh, 
So what are rules, rules of thumb of when to use Leela and when to use Stockfish? That is actually a very interesting question. So um, you'll notice, by the way, just to show you real quick, uh, the the one we downloaded, the uh, this one, the 42850, actually doesn't even have an, a, a, anything on the end. But whichever one of these you put in the folder, which we'll do in a second, Leela knows how to read it. Now, to answer that question, uh, while I do this, I'm going to copy this GZ file over. Um, you and I have, when, when, when I was on the show, uh, when I was on the podcast, we talked about the 365 Chess Academy, correct? Yes. And RV Ramesh's. Yes. So um, they actually just had uh, former world champion Vishwanathan Anand on there doing a, four hours of discussion about uh, training and improvement. Uh, it, it was mind blowing. But what I was really startled to see was that he uses Leela as his default engine. Um, and and when we pull up something, we'll we'll talk about that. And we'll we'll pull up a a, a game and we'll we'll talk about that in just a second. Real quick, right here, you'll notice there are two of these the these PBGZ files here. Um, when you initially unzip and co and copy this folder over, it comes with this five nine one five nine one two two six version. Uh, that's a very very small network and it's not very strong, so you can just delete that. And now you've got the one you want, this two fifty six by twenty. So we're going to close all this and we're going to go back into chess space. And now we're going to do exactly what we did before. We're just going to set the same thing up. Well, I opened my chess space. <laughs> that was not the, what I wanted to do. Um, we're going to go to create UCI engine. And again, we're just going to go to windows or wherever you put it. But for us, it's program files, chess space, engines. This is the LC0 folder. And now you have a choice here. You do not want to click on client. That's only you only use that if you want to uh, contribute some of your GPU time to helping train Leela. And you, to read about that, just go to their website. It's it's a little complicated, but you know basically you'd be you'd be helping Leela grow on your own computer. You could do it if you wanted to do it by using client. What we want to do is LC zero here. We're going to click that, and then we're just going to click on parameters. Very, very quickly, it is super important when you do this, you only ever want to use two threads. Uh, if, you, if you give it more than two threads or two CPU um, uh, cycles, so to speak, it's actually detrimental. It, it, uh, Leela can't handle all that processing power. Uh, the other thing you may want to do is this NN cache size. You may want to put that up to about 2 million as opposed to 200,000. Uh, everything else should be good to just leave as is. Uh, mini batch you could set to 512, but um, it's not necessary. This is kind of really, really tweaking it just for you know, for best results. Uh, but but threads really should always be set to two. We're gonna click OK. We're gonna click OK, and now the same thing. We're gonna hit Add Kibitzer, and let's see what we got. And it is running at approximately 8,000 nodes per second, which is exactly what you want with this GPU. So now, so the question is, how could you do this? Or, or when, when should you use uh, Leela? Um, and when should you use Stockfish? Well, Stockfish is very good at brute calculation. So if you have, uh, if you have, let's say a, you know, opposite side Sicilian, where it looks like one side is going to checkmate the other. Um, Stockfish might be the, the engine you want to go to. If you are looking at technical end games, that also might be a place for Stockfish to do it because uh, Leela, Leela is very good for it. Let me give you an example here. Uh, this is actually a correspondence game I'm playing right now. If I can remember how it goes. Uh, Bishop E7... No, it's DC4. DC4, Bishop G2, A6, castles, Knight C6, Knight C3, Rook B8. And if you look at the opening book here, you don't have an opening book? Ben, you're killing me. Uh, this thing is brand new. I... We'll, we'll, we'll tweak all this off screen for you. Uh, if we just do an online search. So the main move here is, uh, let's see, E4 or possibly 
e3 or bishop g5 is a move that's been played a little bit recently um i ended up and, and actually this is actually kind of interesting we can sort of watch this in real time so you can run leela and stockfish at the same time the only thing to do is be careful about how many threads each is getting so uh let's start stockfish with let's say four eh, we can start with eight that's fine um let's start it with eight gigs of ram and the one thing we're going to do is we're just going to push this down to four so that we leave a couple CPUs open for Leela. And we'll add a Kibitzer here too. We'll add Leela, advanced, and that's fine. It only can has to go up to 124. The thing about Leela is it doesn't need a lot of RAM uh, to for the hash table, so you can pretty much just leave it, you know, whatever, whatever it gets. Um, so it's interesting here. So I actually played B3. And you'll notice that um, the evaluations are going to change a little bit. Stockfish is a little more materialistic. It thinks that taking this... It thinks like knight takes d4 is actually kind of a... I wouldn't say a refutation, but it thinks black is, has got good value for the pawn a little bit. Um, Leela is going to be a little more optimistic here. And it, Leela is good at sort of understanding compensation. Uh, it's very, very human in that respect. And I think that's what Anand was saying, is that when he's looking at games, he's looking at, you know, Grandmaster games and going through them very, very quickly. He wants to get different ideas, and Leela is going to give you more usable ideas um, uh, in a lot of positions, more human-like ideas. Stockfish will be stronger for brute tactics and endgames, uh, but really, you know, increasingly, I think Leela is the way to go. So yeah, so it's kind of interesting here. I mean, Stockfish, the, the deeper it's going to get is probably going to like black more and more after something like, I don't know what, you know, let's say Bishop F4, whatever, Bishop D7. And you can play with this and, and, and you, you can see how this works if, if you have both of these running. Um, but yeah, if, if you're really interested in this, you can take a look at the, the TCEC championship that's going on right now where Leela and Stockfish are battling it out and you get some really, really interesting you know, alpha, beta, brute force tactics against the more human sort of style of Leela. There, there's a lot of really fascinating games being played there. And right now, Stockfish is winning, the last I saw. So uh, there's there's still hope for uh, for, for, for brute force uh, human-coded uh, engines. Yeah. Anyway, so this is how you do it. This is how you get both of these in here. And again, the websites you're looking at are stockfish.org or possibly, uh, if you want to use my version... First look chess, and you download one of these two, and then you just go to Leela to get whichever one of these you want. So, are you uh, you feel completely ready to uh, to to take the day with uh, with this there there Ben? Um, yeah, I really appreciate this. If I were if you didn't just do this, I would need to watch this video about twenty times. But uh... that is uh, that is what I am here for. Well, not for everybody because then I'd never get anything else done. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to be able to do this. I'm glad we're able to show people this. Um, and we're going to try to do some more videos about how to use things in chess space, uh, in the weeks ahead for us chess. And, and hopefully that will be something that people can use. So anyway, um, Ben and I are going to talk about a couple things off, off stream, so to speak. Uh, I hope this has been useful to everybody. Ben, thank you for letting me hijack this, uh, this work we're doing and, and putting this up on us chess. Oh, thank you, John. You're too kind. I really appreciate it's it. It's no problem at all. And uh, yeah, thanks, everybody. I hope you get something out of it and leave some good comments below. Thanks a lot. Bye, everyone. Bye. Uh, and watch Perpetual Chess. Don't forget. Listen, whatever. That's yeah. right. Well, yeah, you, on YouTube, too, right? Yeah, you can watch the line squiggle on YouTube while they talk. That is my favorite thing. All right. Thanks, Ben. Bye. All right.